Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and uh, today I have brought a very interesting problem and it uh, did bother me a lot. This problem used to bother me a lot and it does bother a lot of students and teachers. This is Harvard problem of the week, uh, uh, week 5 problem uh, that is regarding acceleration of the raindrop. So let me straight away get into the problem. Let's see. So what's the problem? Uh, assume that a cloud consists of tiny water droplets suspended uniformly distributed and at rest in air and consider a raindrop falling through them. So there might be some cloud and there will be some uh, tiny tiny droplets which might fuse together to form a raindrop and then that raindrop will start falling through the cloud. Okay. Uh, falling through them. What is the acceleration of the raindrop? That's what we have found. Assume that when the raindrop hits a water droplet, the droplets water gets added to the raindrop. Okay. Also assume that the raindrop is spherical at all times. So these th this is exact language uh, mentioned in the problem. Although uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes students do not understand this problem properly. So that's why I would add a little bit uh, language to it so that the language of the question is crystal clear. Uh, because uh, many times students come to know uh, about the correct interpretation after they look at the solution. So let me tell you uh, what ex exactly does it mean. So another assumption that you need to make is initial velocity and radius of raindrops is zero. That's not mentioned in the problem. But then if you consider the pr process of raindrop formation, so these very tiny droplets, they are going to fuse together. So it's a reasonable assumption to assume that initial radius of the raindrop is zero. Okay. So if you want, you can give it a try. It's a pretty hard one. Uh, uh, you get a very weird kind of differential equation, then you have to make some intelligent guesses for doing it. If you want, you can give it a try. Otherwise, you can have a look at my solution right away. I'll get into my analysis right away. Okay, so let's see. <coughs> okay, so first thing, uh, uh, recall the concept that you learned while studying variable mass systems. So let's say you have a mass m and some dm mass is getting attached to this in at some time dt. And the velocity of this dm relative to this mass is let us say vrel. And let's say at the same time it's being pulled by some external force. So then what's the differential equation or what's the equation that governs this variable mass system? Uh, this is a standard equation that you learn while studying variable mass system. That is external force plus relative velocity of this mass into dm by dt which I have written as m dot is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay. So uh, what happens when this mass gets attached to it, it provides some kind of a thrust force and because of that, uh, that is also causing acceleration. So if you want to see it as a constant mass system, then you just think of this mass and consider this term as the force applied by the incoming mass. Okay. So this is the equation that holds for variable mass system. So in our case also, uh, the situation is somewhat similar. See, uh, let's say this is our raindrop and this is falling with some velocity v. So then uh, let's say rho is its density and let's say the local droplet density is rho naught. Uh, I mean the density of material uh, in the cloud is rho naught which will be different from rho y because it also has got interspacing of air and other things apart from the water droplets. Okay, So this material density is rho naught and this density is rho. So what happens when this drop goes down? So how much does it go down in a time dt? It goes down a time, uh, goes down a distance v dt. And in this process, it sweeps out uh, uh, the cross section of sweeping is pi r square. So that means what volume swept in time dt is pi r square v dt, right? So this and uh, the mass that is swept uh, is accordingly rho naught into pi r square v dt, right? So this much mass will get attached to the raindrop in a time dt, right? Uh, so uh, just for this raindrop system, I, if I uh, translate this equation, what does it become? So uh, uh, okay, uh, a few things I have calculated that will be putting uh, in this equation. So what is that? So you know that the mass of this raindrop is 4 by 3 pi r cube rho. Okay, 4 by 3 pi r cube is volume. So so what is m dot rate of change? I will be needing, needing m dot here. So that's why I'm calculating m dot in advance. So m dot will be equal to what? Just differentiate this with respect to time. What do you get? 4 pi r square r dot into rho. Okay, and deliberately I'm writing it in a special manner because I want to cancel certain term later on. So you'll understand why I've written it like this, but you should understand how I can write this. See, uh, if you take 4 by 3 pi r cube, you, you divide by 3 and multiply by 3 and then rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube becomes m, right? So that's what I've written. See, so this becomes nothing but uh, 
uh, and then if you're making it r cube you also need to divide by r right so this becomes simply three times instantaneous mass into r dot divided by r so this is a clever manipulation uh, you'll see the use of it later on but i hope you understood why we can write it like this so this much is pretty clear and this is a simple manipulation over here right uh, not that clever either i mean uh, fairly obvious okay and also uh, m dot can also be written as c I told you in dt time, uh, v dt is the swept distance and pi r square is the uh, sweeping cross section. So we can also write the in time dt, this much mass is collected by the drop. Uh, here this rho naught is this density. Okay. So I have written m dot in two ways. So m dot is also this and m dot is also this. So what I can do, I can, uh, uh, if I equate these two, I can write v in terms of r dot. Uh, why I am doing that? See the idea is if i can write v in terms of r dot then v dot can be written as r double dot okay and here also i can put this in terms of the radius and if i put uh, i substitute everything in terms of radius of the drop then i have a single variable to deal with i mean uh, it becomes a, a manageable differential equation somewhat because then you only have radius and time so i my idea is to express everything in terms of radius or time in all these terms and somehow trying to cancel the m so we'll see how that works out later on okay so <clears throat> from 2 and 3 so this is equation 2 and this is our equation 3 so uh, this is also m dot and this is also m dot so equate these two and what do you get velocity is directly proportional to r dot rate of change of radius uh, as a side point i'm not going to use that fact but this is very interesting this means what that rate of going down is proportional to the rate of expanding that means what if you start with the zero radius raindrop then uh, as it grows bigger and bigger it will sweep out a cone uh, in space right because as the the, the increase in radius is proportional to the uh, height uh, depth that it goes down right so just an interesting observation i'm not going to use that anywhere in solving but i hope you got this uh, just equating m dot in two ways so we got equation number four okay now equation number four, I have expressed velocity in terms of r dot and equation number two, I have expressed uh, uh, dm by dt in terms of m and r dot and r. So I can just use this for uh, dm by dt and I can use this for uh, this expression for velocity. See, uh, I'm eliminating velocity. Uh, so everything is getting in terms of radius or it's a derivative of the radius. Okay. So if you substitute that in this equation, so f external becomes what f external is simply mg okay and v rel is what so v rel you can put uh, this 4 rho by rho naught into r dot v rel here is actually velocity is relative to the drop the velocity is upward so if i take downward as positive so upward will become negative okay so that i'll put but v, this v itself is the v rel that is the velocity of the surrounding medium relative to the raindrop okay so that is also expressed in r and then this m dot is also expressed in terms of m and there is an m over here and there's an mg over here and you see the beauty m will get cancelled out as i write uh, this so m gets cancelled out so this becomes a very nice equation now okay so let me uh, zoom out a little bit so you see f external becomes mg and v rel becomes what 4 rho by rho naught r dot here 4 rho by rho naught r dot why a minus sign because v rel is upward and taken downward as positive and m dot is 3 m r dot by rc m dot is 3 m r dot by r and this right hand side is mass times acceleration so v dot becomes what so i had expressed v in terms of r dot so v dot is r double dot so this becomes r double dot and now you see the beauty of this equation what happens uh, m gets cancelled out throughout right so m cancels throughout you can cancel m throughout and rearrange this equation and that gives you that leaves you with a differential equation in only the two variables that is radius of the drop and time okay so i've just cancelled m throughout and just rearranged this equation and this is what i get okay so this is a second order differential equation right so because we have the second derivative r in this so it's a second order differential equation so in general the solution will have two unknowns right so if and to solve those two unknowns i'll need two boundary conditions so what are the boundary conditions i know that at t equal to zero the radius is zero and at t equal to zero velocity is zero but if the velocity is zero, that means r dot is zero. Why? Because I told you the rate of change of radius is proportional to velocity. Okay. According to which equation? See fourth equation, this one. V is proportional to r dot. So if uh, velocity is zero, that means what? Rate of increase of radius is also zero at t equal to zero. Okay. 
and now <laughs> this is a weird differential equation this is not a standard differential differential equation anywhere you don't study these type of differential equations anywhere in the standard theory that you study for j but still uh, we can uh, do something about it so r is some function of time such that its value at t equal to 0 is 0 its derivative at t equal to 0 is 0 but it's uh, this manipulation if you perform on r that gives that that should give you a non zero term so what's the simplest function you can think of which has value zero at t equal to zero and uh, uh, value uh, uh, i mean derivative value is also zero at t equal to zero but the second derivative is probably non zero because r double dot plus something should give you a non zero term so what's the simplest function that you can think of whose uh, value is zero whose derivative value is zero but the second derivative is non zero the simplest thing that comes to our mind is a simple quadratic function of the form a t square right so we are just taking that guess and if i can find out some value of t, uh, a for that then my differential equation is satisfied and initial conditions are anyway already satisfied if i choose a function of form a t square so this was a bit tricky part and this is not that obvious but uh, uh, i hope you understood why this a t square is going to work here uh, if if i can solve if i if i do get a real value of a so let's see what what do i get if i use that substitution what i have written so at t equal to 0 r is 0 and velocity is 0 therefore r dot is also 0 the second order non linear differential equation so its general solution should contain two unknowns but using initial conditions we can guess a solution of the form what r is equal to a t square where a is an unknown and if I put a t square in this equation, see you put r equal to a t square in this. So then r dot becomes what? If r is a t square, r dot is 2 a t. So 2 a t whole square, if you do, this becomes 4, uh, 4 a square t square and this is a t square. So this becomes simply uh, 12, right? You get uh, 12 a over here. If you put r as a t square, this becomes 12 and this becomes what? r double dot is 2 a, right? If r is a t square, r double dot becomes 2 a okay so this becomes 12 a because uh, 4 into 3 becomes 12 r dot will contain a 2 okay so this becomes 12 a and this becomes 2 a so this whole thing becomes 14 a right so what do i get so 12 a plus 2 a that is 14 a is equal to rho naught by 4 rho into g and that gives you if you rearrange this equation i'm just solve for a a comes out to be rho naught g upon 56 rho right so now if i have a i exactly know the value of r as a function of time and if i know r as a function of time then uh, i simply know velocity as a function of time because r r dot is related to velocity through this and if i know velocity as a function of time i just differentiate once more and i get acceleration as a function right uh, rather here acceleration will come out to be constant as we'll see so just uh, using 4 so a is v dot and v dot is uh, what 4 rho by rho naught into r double dot because v was 4 rho by rho naught into r dot as, you, as as i showed you just now okay so just you put now uh, so r becomes this after you put the value of a uh, a comes out this uh, this i mean rho naught g upon 56 so you put here uh, 56 rho and this is the value of r so acceleration is you take the second derivative of this so t square derivative will become what 2t and another derivative you take you, that becomes t so so this is what you get for acceleration by substituting uh, this uh, r and finally uh, you see this is 56 and this is 4 and 2 so 4 to the 8 and 8 7 the 56 so cancels off and rho by rho naught goes with rho naught by rho and you are simply left with g by 7 so that's our final answer cute little answer so uh, that's the analysis what happens now many times students if they do not assume initial uh, size of the drop to be zero then uh, they find this answer to be quite counterintuitive why because if suppose the drop has already some finite size and initial velocity is zero then obviously its acceleration should be g downwards so that's what bothers them that shouldn't the initial acceleration be g why this acceleration is g by 7 so the reason is because initial velocity is zero and initial size of the drop is also zero and from there itself uh, new drops start attaching and the force related to the size of the drop relative to mg is not negligible because of the attachment of the newer drops and that's why initial acceleration itself just after dt time after start itself becomes g by 7 and it goes with a constant acceleration okay so that was my analysis for the problem 
okay this was a harvard problem of the week 5 that was related to acceleration of the raindrops i hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you enjoyed the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible through you, uh, to your with your friends through whatsapp telegram or whatever medium you use for networking with them and most importantly if you've not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all. Thank you.